My wife and I have been in our condo unit for two years now. At 615 square feet for a one bedroom plus den, you can see our home is quite cozy. The den, which we're using as our office and measures seven feet by eight feet, doesn't have a lot of space to work with, made even more apparent by the lack of any natural light reaching it. My previous office setup left me feeling cramped and with the limited storage space in the unit, the clutter was starting to slowly pile up. It was obvious to me that the layout wasn't working and I started to think of ways to make the most of this space, both functionally and aesthetically. Truly, all that mattered was that my wife and I have a pleasant experience when we use it. I've always been fond of the mid-century modern style and drew inspiration from it when I was planning this makeover. While placing an emphasis on utility and minimalism, I used clean, simple geometric lines and shapes, as well as wood, metal, and accent colors to create a warm and inviting space that I actually saw spending time in. Hey, my name is Tivi, and if you're new here, welcome. If you've been following me on my makeover journey for the past few months, welcome back. With that being said, let me give you a tour of my dream office and desk setup. Feel free to drop a comment below and let me know what part you like the best or what I can do to improve my space. I'd love to hear what you think. Let me start this tour off with the two additions I made to the office walls. The most obvious one is the wood slab feature wall. The white walls were boring and uninspiring so I turned the back wall into the focal point of the office. Your eyes are drawn to it when you enter the space and it gives a much needed character. Given that this office is inspired by mid-century modern design elements, I thought a wood slat wall would fit in perfectly with that motif. The slat walls are made from 8 feet 1x2 pine boards that I cut to length to cover the wall in the bulkhead. I used a walnut stain on them to get a nice dark brown color and green that really stands out. Because we are currently renting, I had to come up with a non-permanent solution to make the wall black and secure the slats in place. The end result is a feature wall that's warm and inviting while looking eye-catchingly sophisticated. I have a video on my channel that shows exactly how I built it, so make sure you check it out. I hung up a frame print on either side of the desk, one of our dog and the other of our daughter for a sentimental touch. With every piece of item in this office needing to have a purpose, I made sure that the frames held pictures that are near and dear to me. I didn't want to spend a lot on this, so I picked up the 16x20 long Viking frames from IKEA. Moving on to the desk setup. The biggest upgrade to it was this new desk. The criteria that I had when I was searching for a replacement was that it had to be long enough to accommodate my dual monitors and PC case, have a wood finish, be of good quality to last me for the foreseeable future, and lastly, have a sit-stand base so that I can work standing during parts of my day. My search started with pre-assembled units from companies like Ergon Office and Effie Desk, but the ones that checked off everything on my list came with a hefty price tag. So, I decided to source the desktop and system base separately to get what I wanted for the price that fit my budget. What I came up with is a 74 inch IKEA Park Kubota countertop sitting on top of a system base from a company called Abizo that I found on Amazon. The color of the wood was exactly what I was looking for, but what really sold me was the veneer's interesting chevron pattern. It looks very unique and modern, and most people wouldn't be able to tell that it's from IKEA. In terms of build quality, it's pretty heavy and feels sturdy, and the veneer has no visible defects. One major issue that I had with my previous desktops is that they start to sag in the middle over time due to the weight of everything on it. I'm confident that this won't be a problem with this one since the system base's crossbar runs along the length of it. It'll help support and distribute the countertop's weight more evenly and prevent any sagging. Another issue I've come across is the wear and tear of the working area and surface level scratches and stains appearing with constant use. This can easily be fixed on this desktop by sanding the veneer down a bit and applying a protective coat when it gets really worn down. The sit-stand desk has dual motors with two stage legs that can be height adjusted from 28 inches up to 44 inches. I'm able to raise and lower the desk fairly quickly and it's surprisingly quiet. It comes with collision detection, which means it detects extra load to the motors caused by any obstructions underneath it when lowering and automatically stops. This feature is a huge plus for me because I have a one-year-old at home who's not mobile and this would prevent any unwanted injuries from her playing around the desk and accidentally pressing the touchpad. Speaking of touchpad, there are four programmable height settings which means my wife and I have our own sit and stand heights available at the touch of a button. I placed it in a recessed spot underneath the desk to keep it hidden and give the edge of the desk a clean look. It's fairly easy to reach underneath and press the tactile buttons. While this sit stand desk space has some good qualities for the affordable price tag, it still has a drawback. It's pretty sturdy at lower heights, but when I raise it past a certain point, it tends to have a noticeable wobble. But to be honest with you, this is not a deal breaker for me. 
I'm not doing anything at my desk where this would be a problem and for the price I paid for it, I can live with it. Plus, this is a common issue for many C-Stan desks out there around this price point. The extra real estate and being able to switch between sitting and standing provides more functionality to the desk and has improved my overall productivity. I'm impressed with how this desk turned out. Just like with the desk, I found that prefabricated desk shelves from companies like Rove Made were too expensive for the utility that I was going to get out of it. So I decided to build my own one-of-a-kind custom desk shelf. With what little woodworking skills that I possess and just a few steps from start to finish, I was able to make this with what I felt was very little effort. Having a desk shelf allows me to tuck away my peripherals and other items that would typically be out in the open underneath it and have them out of sight. The top of the desk shelf also adds an extra dimension to the desktop, providing both visual interest and additional space where I can place small items such as my clock, books, and pen holder. The end product is a sleek, minimal desk shelf and I think it turned out pretty good considering how little it cost me to make. There are a multitude of ways to add accent lighting to an office and desk setup. I chose to keep it relatively simple. First, I installed LED light strips that run along the side and back edges of my desk and up the monitor arm to the back of my monitors. The LEDs create a soft ambient glow around the desk and does a good job creating visible separation between the desk and walls. I also installed a modified IKEA Forza desk lamp above my monitors. While it functions similar to a light bar, this lamp adds a unique look to the desk setup for a fraction of the price. It didn't come in a color that I liked, so I spray painted it black and gold. There is a bit of light spilling onto the monitors, but it doesn't affect the display since they have matte screens. Having accent lighting helps reduce eye strain and fatigue, meaning that I'm able to use the monitors for longer periods of time. It also makes the space warm and inviting. And some evenings, I like to dim the lights, light up a candle, and have the warm, flickering glow and pleasant aroma create a calm, soothing mood that I need at the end of a stressful day. In order to have a clean, minimal desk setup, I had to do some serious cable management. I routed all of the cables leading to and from the PC, monitors, PSU, and peripherals underneath the desk and behind the monitor arm support using straps, J-channel raceways, cable sleeves, velcro ties, and cable clips. The desk shelf does a good job hiding the cables running from any peripherals that are wired. The end result is not having any cables visible on top or underneath the desk, save for the PSU's power cable that's running to the outlet. My previous video goes into depth of how I did my cable management, so make sure you check that out if you're interested. I knew that I wanted a chair with a particular look that would fit the style of the rest of the office. Something like the classic Herman Miller Eames office chairs, but those are thousands of dollars and well outside of my budget. So I found the next best thing, the IKEA LF Jaw. While it's a great looking office chair with ample padding on the seat and armrest, between a lack of a headrest and a very shallow feeling seat, it's not ideal for extended periods of use. Online reviews have also said that it starts making squeaking noises over time whenever you move around in it, but I'm hoping that will be the case for me. For now, this chair will just be more for the aesthetics until I can afford something nicer. I built my PC in 2017, and although it's outdated by today's standards, it didn't necessarily mean that it had to look like it was. So I gave it a facelift by swapping it into a new case to make it look more cohesive with the rest of the space. This is the Fractal Design North PC case. This case isn't meant to just house PC components, but to also make a statement as a decorative piece. With features like the wood slat facade, the gold plated input output panel on top, and the tinted glass side panel, it fits in nicely with the mid-century modern look. Inside it, it's got an Intel i7 7700K CPU with an all-in-one look at cooler by Coolmaster, 32 gigs of crucial DDR4 RAM, and an EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 hybrid GPU, all sitting on an Asus Prime Z270A motherboard. For storage, I have two 240GB Kingston Predator SSDs, as well as three 2TB Seagate Barracuda hard drives. It's not in the cards for me right now, but a new build might be necessary in the near future if I decide to buy a dedicated 4K camera. I'm currently using two 24-inch Dell Ultra HD 4K monitors in my setup. It comes factory color calibrated, and has 99% sRGB coverage, which makes it great for photo and video editing. In fact, I find that the color reproduction on my photo prints are pretty spot on. I only have them placed side by side when I'm recording for my videos, for aesthetic reasons. To have a better viewing angle when I'm working, I sit centered with the right monitor and turn the left monitor towards me. 
Having all of the screen real estate across both monitors allows me to throw multiple applications up on it based on what I'm working on. It definitely makes multitasking more effortless and has a positive impact on my productivity. Another great thing about this monitor is the additional connectivity. There are four USB 3.0 downstream ports that are available on the back, effectively giving me eight ports between the two. This was advantageous when it came to cable management because I was able to connect all of my peripherals to these ports and have a single upstream USB connection with the PC. Now, what I don't like about this monitor is this massive eyesore of a bezel, which when placed side by side is so obvious and annoying. I wouldn't mind upgrading to an ultra wide eventually, but for now, these ones suit my knees just fine. Holding the monitors up is a desk mount from a company called Vivo which I found on Amazon. It's attached securely to the desk via the C-clamp and the base of plate makes it easy to mount the monitors on the arms. It also has clips on the arms and pole for easier cable management. The only issue is that it's difficult to make minor adjustments to the articulating arm to get the monitors lined up perfectly without struggling. Normally this wouldn't be an issue but since I'm going back and forth between the side by side and angle setup frequently now, it's become a bit of a pain. Overall, it's a decent monitor desk mount that's barely noticeable hidden behind the desk shelf. This is a desk leather pad from a company called Nodal on Amazon. It comes in a few different sizes and colors, this one being the 35 inch black one. I have to say, the quality is quite impressive considering I only paid $29 for it. It lays flat on my desk without curling and grips the desktop very firmly. After daily use for the past 3 years, there's been little to no fraying or peeling or any permanent scuffs or scratches on the desk pad. To be honest, it still looks brand new. All I do is wipe it down with some soap and water every few months to keep it clean. I would highly recommend this to anyone looking for a new desk pad. This is the Keychron K4 wireless mechanical keyboard with Gatoron red switches. I'm really trying hard not to delve into the world of mechanical keyboards because honestly I can't afford it. I just wanted a budget wireless keyboard with a decent typing experience and the ability to mod it if I wanted to and this one fit the bill. I'm looking to change my keycaps to all black ones in the near future to blend in with the color scheme of the rest of the setup. In terms of battery life, I haven't had the need to constantly reach for the charging cable and feel the annoyance that comes with that, so it's safe to say that it's pretty good. There's a dedicated number pad which I absolutely need and one of the reasons I got it over the other compact models. While the keyboard looks good and types good, there are a few mild annoyances with it. Firstly, the keyboard sits a little too high due to the height of the frame, so typing for long periods of time has been hard on my wrist. I'm probably going to have to get a wrist stress to help with this. Secondly, the placement of the LED backlight mode toggle key has me pressing it by accident when I'm trying to hit the delete key or when I'm moving the keyboard or even just accidentally brushing it when I'm reaching for the mouse. I ended up stuffing some paper underneath the keycap to prevent it from being pressed down while filming this video. Lastly, the keyboard takes a bit of time to come back online after going to sleep mode when on Bluetooth. Other than these things, this is a pretty solid entry level mechanical keyboard and I'm pretty happy with it. My mouse is none other than the Logitech MX Master 3 in mid-gray. This is a fantastic mouse with great ergonomics and it feels really good in my palm. It has a good heft to it, and with the 4000 dpi laser sensor, it's very responsive and precise. The battery life is insane too, lasting me for what feels like months at a time with every full charge. I also like the ability to program with 6 buttons to have specific functions in certain applications. For example, in Adobe Premiere, the thumb buttons can be programmed with the undo and redo functions. It might not seem like a big deal, but when you're doing repetitive tasks or using certain functions a lot, it helps to make it more efficient. This mouse has a lot of features to make me more productive, while its design helps reduce the strain on my hand. It's by far the best mouse I've owned and I'm happy that it's part of my setup. This is my photo editing setup. It consists of the Huon H610 Pro Graphics Drawing Tablet and the Behringer X-Touch Mini USB MIDI controller. You might be wondering how I'm using a MIDI controller for my editing. I use a free application called MIDI2LR that maps the MIDI controller's buttons and knobs to Adobe Lightroom's tools and adjustments. The exposure, temperature, tint, masking, undo, redo, and a whole bunch of others that I use frequently are saved on a custom profile. The best part is, is that this app works on a number of MIDI controllers out there. The drawing tablet allows me to not only manipulate the brush tool more finely, it also allows me to use tools like masking and spot correction with ease and precision in combination with the MIDI controller. Both of these devices have revolutionized the way that I edit my images. The way they work in tandem has cut down on editing time while allowing me to utilize Lightroom tools more proficiently. Last but not least, the mic I'm using is the Blue Yeti mounted on a boom arm by a company called iX Tech. I needed a decent mic and this was by far the most popular choice. 
There are four pickup patterns offered by this mic. I stick with the cardioid pattern, as the internet tells me that this is the best one for recording voiceovers. I added a pop filter from a brand called InnoGear in front of the mic to help reduce popping sounds. It'll help improve the quality of the audio recordings. With countless Blue Yeti mic reviews online, I don't have anything new to add, but for my purpose of recording voiceovers, including this one, I'm very impressed with how it sounds. After months of painstakingly putting it together, I'm happy to say that I'm in love with my new dream office and desk setup. While some of my tech may be outdated, I still achieved what I set out to do, and that was to build a beautiful office space that my wife and I see ourselves spending time in and be inspired by. Let me know what you guys think of my makeover in the comments, what you liked, what I can improve on, or if this video has inspired you to update your desk or office. My overall goal for this channel is to create tech and lifestyle content that is both entertaining and informative, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell if this interests you as I have a lot planned for this channel. Until the next one, cheers.